This video is going to take a look at how we can use trees and other counting techniques to count and explore possible outcomes to an experiment. First, we'll discuss the multiplication rule of counting. The multiplication rule says that if E1 and E2 are different events that have N1 and N2 possible outcomes, respectively, then the total possible outcomes is going to be the product of the number of options for each event. Okay, that sounds really complicated. It's actually really simple if we look at an example. We have a restaurant that has four appetizers, seven main dishes, and three desserts. How many possible meals could be created from this? The multiplication rule of counting says we multiply the possibilities. So there's four appetizers times seven main dishes times three desserts, and that's going to give us 84 possible meals that we can organize from these options. Another thing we can do with our options is employ a tree diagram, which is a visual display of the total number of outcomes of an experiment. We'll have one branch to represent each possible outcome. So for example, if I were to roll a die and then flip a coin, we could do a branch of the tree to represent each possible outcome. First we roll a die, we could get a 1, we could get a 2, we could get a 3, we could get a 4, we could get a 5, or we could get a 6. After rolling the die, we flip a coin. So after rolling a 1, we'll either get a heads or a tails. After rolling a 2, we'll either get a heads or a tails. After rolling a 3, we'll either get a heads or a tails. And similarly, 4 gives us heads and tails, 5 gives us heads and tails, and 6 gives us heads and tails. And so if I go down all the branches of this tree, we'll see all the possible outcomes of the sample space. Trees also help us with probabilities, combining with the multiplication rule. Let's take a look at how that works. We have a jar with four red marbles and six blue marbles. You're going to draw two marbles out without replacement. So on the first draw, there's two possibilities that we could get. We could get a red marble, or we could get a blue marble. The probability we get a red marble is 4 out of 10, while the probability we get a blue marble is 6 out of 10. And then, without replacement, we're going to draw again. And on the second draw, we could get either a red or a blue on either of the options. However, these probabilities are dependent probabilities. They're dependent on what happened first. Because there were 10 marbles originally, now there's 9 marbles left. So the last probability is going to be out of 9. There were 4 reds, but on this left branch, we drew a red on the first draw. So there's only three reds left out of nine, while there are still six out of nine blue marbles left in the bag. On the right side, it's similar but a little different because a blue marble's been taken out first, which means there are still four reds out of the nine that remain in the bag. But on the far right, there's only five blues left out of the nine that remain in the bag. And so if I go down a branch, we can see the far left branch represents getting a red and a red. The way we can calculate that probability is using the multiplication rule. 4 times 3 is 12 over 90, 9 times 10. 12 out of 90 is the probability of getting a red and a red. Going down the left and the right, we see red-blue is the next option. And that's 4 times 6 is 24 out of 90 possible outcomes. A blue followed by a red is the next, which also has 6 times 4, 24 out of 90. And a blue times blue is 6 times 5. A blue blue has a probability of 30 out of 90. And we could divide these to get their equivalent decimals if we wanted to. But this is how the tree diagram can help us see the probability that we'll get any type of result in our sample space. Sometimes we're just interested in counting possible results. We don't have to list them out like in the tree. 
These are done with permutations and combinations. They're both very similar with one minor difference. A permutation is the number of ways we can choose our items out of a possibility of n items where the order matters. If it makes a difference who's chosen first, second, and third, we have a permutation. Contrast this with a combination. We're still choosing r out of n items, but now the order does not matter. Now it just matters that we're selecting a committee of three people. It doesn't matter which order they get picked in. Now to actually calculate the number of possibilities, we have some formulas. First, we need to understand this idea of a factorial. A factorial is the explanation point. And that factorial means we're going to multiply by that number and everything below it. So for example, 5 factorial means we're multiplying 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, everything below it to get 120. Now that you've got an idea of how the factorial works, we're actually ready to calculate a permutation. To calculate a permutation, remember n is the total number of outcomes. R is how many we're actually choosing. We take n factorial divided by their difference factorial. So if I want the permutation of 5 choosing 2, out of 5 things, we're going to choose 2 of them, and the order matters. It'll be 5 factorial over 5 minus 2 is 3 factorial. And this is nice to calculate, because 5 is 5 times 4 times 3, all the way down from 3 to 1. But notice that 3 factorial matches in the numerator and denominator. So we're just left with 5 times 4, which is 20. That's the permutation formula. The combination formula is really similar. Out of a total of n items, we're going to choose r of them. The only difference is now we're going to also divide by that r factorial in the denominator. So the difference times the r. So if I'm going to choose five out of five items, I'm going to choose two of them. It's still going to be five factorial. We'll still divide by their difference, three factorial. But we're also going to multiply by two factorial. So if I count down again from the five, five times four times three factorial. I'll stop there because that matches something in the denominator. And two factorial is two times one. 3 factorials divide out, 4 divided by 2 is just 2, and so I'm left with 5 times 2, or 10 outcomes. 10 ways we can choose 2 out of 5 items where the order does not matter. Now to help us with larger numbers, we can do these on Excel. So let's take a look at those. There's an equals fact for factorials, an equals permute for permutations, and equals combin for combinations. I've got two examples here. One, we've got a union of 40 employees that want to select a committee of six people. Here, the order that that union picks their committee does not matter. We're just picking six out of the 40. Since the order does not matter, we have a combination. So I'll hit equals, combin, open a parenthesis, the number we have as options, 40, comma, we're going to choose six of these people. Close the parentheses, and when I hit enter, we find there are 3,838,380 ways to choose six out of 40 people. Now, if the union wants to actually elect a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer, now the order matters because the first one's going to be the president. The second one's the vice president. There's a difference if we change the order. Now we're talking about a permutation. Equals permute, open a parenthesis. We know there's 40 employees in this union, and they're selecting a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. That's four positions. And when I hit enter, I find there are 2,193,360 ways they can select their officers. Hopefully this video has helped you as you've taken a look at trees and counting techniques as we employ these various techniques to count the total possible outcomes. Good luck to you as you practice with these concepts.